This video is part of our course on PySite 6 for widgets, which is on Udemy. The course goes from the absolute beginning, showing you how you can take advantage of cute widgets using the Python API under the PySite 6 or a cute for Python umbrella. And it covers things you really need on a daily basis, signals and slots, a bunch of widgets you can use. We show you how to use Qt Designer. At the end, we also show you how to work with networks and the model view architecture. If you are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below. In this lecture, we are going to explore the Q main window class. This is a class that allows us to work with things like menus, toolbars, status bars, actions, and it is really cool. What this is going to give us is a window like this, but a window that has little parts or components that we can customize. For example, in many applications, at the list, graphical user interface applications, we have something like a toolbar or a menu bar on top. And below that, we might have a toolbar that contains things we can click on to make things happen. After that, we are going to have something like a main or a central widget. And in that widget, we are going to put in the main component of our application. If it is an editor or a text processing application, users will be able to type things in this component and things like that. We might even have a status bar, something we can use to show some messages or whatever. You can design your applications reusing this components that are built into the Q main window class that you can instantiate in your Qt applications. So this is what we are going to do here. We will create a class that is going to be building on top of Q main window. And on top of that, we will be doing our own things. And you're going to see that we will have the ability to add menu bars, toolbars, status bars, and that's going to be really cool. Once we have this class inherited, we can add menus like we see here. So we can call the menu bar function on Q main window, and this is going to give us a menu bar object that we can manipulate. Once we have it, we can add other menus. For example, you see here, we are adding a file menu and the add menu method is going to give us a menu object that we can use to manipulate our menu here. For example, we can add actions to our menu and we are doing that right here. And this is going to give us an action we can manipulate later in our Qt applications. I realize this is a bit convoluted, but actions are a thing that you can use to manipulate a user doing something in your application. Suppose we have a quit action like this, and we want the user to be able to trigger this either from the menu bar or the toolbar. So the user could go in a file menu and select quit, or they can go on the toolbar directly and click quit. The way Qt does this, it adds in an intermediary step through which you can go to trigger this action. And this is what this action is. An action is an object that you can either add to the toolbar or the menu bar. And when the user tries to quit either through the menu or the toolbar, all these things are going to go through the same action and you can connect this action to a method that is going to do things in your Qt application. And you don't have to duplicate your code either in the menu bar or in the toolbar. I am going to show you this when we hit Visual Studio Code if it is not making sense yet, but this is a really good design when it comes to the Qt framework. So we have the action here and this is the action that we will be connecting slots to. For example, you can see Whenever this action is triggered, this is a signal that is emitted by Q action. You can go in the documentation to, take, to check this out. When this action is triggered, we will call a method called quit. And this is going to quit our application as you are about to see. Again, the meat of this here is to show you how you can manipulate menus in your Qt applications. Once you have the menu bars, you can add menus to that menu bar. And once you add a menu, you will have a menu object you can add actions to. We are repeating the same process here. We are adding in an edit menu. And in this edit menu, we will add actions to copy, cut, paste, undo, and redo. And we will be seeing these things in our user interface. And if we really wanted, we could grab these actions and connect slots to them to do things in our application. And I think we will even do an application like this later in the chapter here. So stay tuned for that. Down here, you see that we have a bunch of other menus. We have Windows settings, help. We can do these things. 
Another thing we can do is also manipulate the toolbar and you do that by setting up a toolbar object like you do here. Once you have the toolbar, you're going to add that to the main window using this method here. And you can add actions to the toolbar. You see, we are adding an action, we are adding an action. And before we add the action, we're going to create it. So this is how you create your action. You can put in a bunch of things and you can connect slots to the action. This is really what we are doing here. Another thing I want you to see is that you can even pass an icon when you create the action. And this icon is going to show up wherever you add that action in your user interface. And this is really cool. Down here, we are adding a separator in our toolbar and we are even adding a push button in our toolbar. You can do that if you want, it is possible. Let's see how you can also use status bars. To use the status bar, you set the status bar on your main window using the setting we have here. And we are creating a status bar object in place and passing that in. Down below, you see that we are doing a button that is going to be showing up as our central widget. And once we show this, we are going to see the entire application here. And this is really cool. Down here, we have our methods that are going to respond whether we click on buttons or things in the toolbar, all the menu bars, and you see the method here. You also see the method to quit. And once you have these things, your application is going to work. Now that you have this, we can head over to Visual Studio Code and play with us step by step. Okay, here we are in our Visual Studio Code editor. We have an empty folder that we are going to be using to do whatever we do in this lecture here. Let's drag and drop this on top of Visual Studio Code and we will create our main.py file. On top of this, we will also create a main window file. Let's do that. And this is going to be where we create our main window class. The first thing we want to do is to make sure we have the correct import. So we are importing Q application and Q main window. We will need to pass an application object to this window to be able to quit. You're going to see how we wire these things up. But for now, just put Q application here. Let's go down and set up our class. It is going to be nothing really special. The class is going to be called main window. It's going to be inheriting from Q main window. Let's make sure you can see that it is going to be inheriting from Q main window here. We are doing our constructor thing, and we have a member which is called app, which is going to be the application instance that created this main window here. And we will be using this application member to quit the application. Again, you will see how we use these things in a minute. Now we have a main window object. I think we can go in the main py file and try to use this. So let's go down and put that in here. It is not going to be anything special. We have Q application imported. We are importing main window from our main window file, the class we just set up here. And we are creating a window, which is main window. We are showing it and we are kicking off the event loop. Nothing special here. So let's show the terminal window to be able to run this. And we are going to say Python main.py. And if we do this, we will see a window pop up here, but you may think this is a normal widget, Daniel. Why all the fuss around Q main window? Let me show you. We are going to go back to main window here and we are going to put in a piece of code like this. Okay, so this is going to be setting up our menu bar. So we will call the menu bar method on our main window object. And it is going to give us a menu bar that we can use to add menus to our main window object here. And again, how do I know this? The documentation. Let's go back to our browser and we can say Q main window here, Q main window. And if we look here, we can see a method called menu bar. You can see that right here. And they are going to say whatever this method does, it is going to return the menu bar for the main window. This function creates and returns an empty menu bar if the menu bar does not exist. So we are going to create it and we can go through these menu bars to add menus to our main window. This is really cool, right? So we are calling add menu to our menu bar object. Again, we can go to the documentation and see what we get from this guy. This is going to return a Q menu bar, okay? And uh, this is why I don't like the documentation for Qt for Python. There should be a link for Q menu bar you can click on to go there, but we have to go back and search here. So let's do Q menu bar and we can open this in our browser. Once you see this, you're going to see that we can do a lot of things. 
And one of these is add a menu. And this is what we are using in our application here to add a menu called the file on our menu here. Let's run and see our menu live. Let's clear, clear properly and run python main.py. If we do that, look at what we have here. We have a menu, we can click on it to do things, but it doesn't have anything inside yet, but we're going to fix this in a minute. Let's close the application first. But what we can say, for example, is file menu. Okay, file menu, add action. And we are going to say something like quit. If we do this and run and come back to our window here, if we click on file, you see we have a quit. We can add menu options in our menus and this is really cool. Okay, another thing we can do is actually grab this action and use it to respond whenever the user triggers this action. For example, we can say quit action. Okay, we can name this quit action and we can connect to it and make a slot respond whenever this action here is triggered. And this is really cool. So let's go down and define a quit method. So let's go down here and say def quit app, for example. And it's a method, so we need to pass self here. And down below, we are going to say app quit. And uh, can we quit? So we're going to say quit. Autocomplete is not helping here, but I think this is going to work. So let's go with this. And once we have the action, we can connect this slot to it. So we can say quit action triggered, connect, and we will connect the self method that is called quit app. Let's see what happens if we do this. And this is really cool if it's going to work. Let's clear and run the application. Now we have our file menu and if we hit quit, the application is going to go away. Let's start it again. File, quit, it is going to go away. And this is really cool. We can add a bunch of other menus now that you know how to work with add menu and add actions on menus. So to populate this, I am going to add an edit menu. And uh, let's take out these ampersand symbols because we don't want to go into that here. They have some use in Qt, but we're not going to go into that here. Now we have another menu added to our menu bar and we are going through this menu to add copy, cut, paste, and do redo menu options. And we will see them in our user interface if we run the application. Let's go to view terminal and clear and run our application. If we do that, we have an edit menu. This is really cool. If we click on it, copy, cut, paste, and do redo. And this is really cool. You can do these things using the QMain window class in Qt for Python. Let's add a bunch of other menus to make this a little bit interesting. We have window, we have settings, we have help. And uh, let's add a comment here. If we run, let's see if we can see these things showing up on our user interface and we see our thing here and this is really cool. Now I hope you know how to work with menus and menu options and you even know how to respond when one of your menu options is triggered. Now let's focus on toolbars. The first thing we do is to create a toolbar object and set a few properties on that. And before we create a toolbar, we need to import the toolbar and the queue size class here we are using to give it the icon size. The size object here is coming from Qt Core, so let's put that in. And if you want to know how I knew that, how did I know that Q size is coming from Qt Core? Well, you have to use the documentation. And if we go back to our browser, I really want you to be familiar with using the documentation because it is an invaluable skill, Q size for Qt for Python or PySide 6. And if we look for it, they should tell us where this thing lives. Uh, Q size, you see, it lives in the Qt core module. That's how I know these things because I don't memorize them. So we have this imported. I think we can import Q toolbar from Qt widgets because that's the module where it lives. We don't even need Q application imported here because we don't need this. So let's take this out. I think this is going to work. And we can go down and keep working on our toolbar here. Once we have the toolbar, we can add in a bunch of actions. So to start, let's say toolbar, add action, and add in our quit action. How about that? 
we can add the quit action to the toolbar and you do that by saying toolbar add action and let's say quit action because i think we have it on top quit action where is our quit action i think we have it right here we can copy it and put that down below here i think this is going to work let's see what happens if we run this application this is going to be really interesting and this is going to explain why we have queue actions in qt so let's see our toolbar you can see our action right here and if we go in file you are also going to see that we have a quit thing set up here but we are managing what happens when a user triggers this action in one place whenever this action is triggered we are going to call the quit app but we can trigger this action from different places in our application and we can either do that from the menu or from the toolbar if we quit from the menu the application is going to die if we quit from the toolbar the application is going to die die and we have one single method to respond to all those possible sources of this action being triggered and i really hope this makes sense so let's go down and keep playing with our toolbar here another thing we can do is create our own action just like we do here action one q action we are giving it some information and a parent because its constructor requires this information. Again, I know this because I read the documentation. So go in the documentation, read the information for Q action, and you will know why we need to do things like we do here. Now we need to import Q action. Q action lives in the Qt GUI module. So we will import that like we do here. And if we go down, our application should be happy. Now that we have the action we can pass, a lot of information for example we can pass a status tip and this is something that is going to pop up when you hover over your action we can do something like this we can respond when this action is triggered and this is going to be a method we set up in our application and after we have the action ready we can add it in our toolbar just like we added our quit action on top here and this is really cool before we run let's go down and actually set up this method so let's copy and say def def and we will pass self as a parameter we will go in the body of the method and we can print a message saying action one triggered okay we can do something like this now that we have this let's make sure it is the same name we are using here action one triggered yeah or we can say or we can even say action triggered this is going to do let's run the application okay we have some action added to our toolbar if we click on it we're going to see that our action is triggered so you can respond to things happening in your toolbar and this is really cool we can even set up another action but before we do let's go to the place where our source code is and we will add in an image because we want to pass an icon to our action here and make it show up in our user interface you can download the source code and have access to this start image here okay so you can use this let's go back to our code and we can go down and set up another action this action is going to be taking up an icon and i think icon is coming from the cute gui module so let's say q icon i think we have that imported here so we can do this and if we set up this thing we can pass our start png icon it is in our project we just pasted this in here and we can pass the icon on top of the other pieces of information that we passed earlier. So we have some text that we pass in our action. We have a parent. We can pass the status tip message here and we can respond when this thing is clicked. And again, this is going to activate our slot here that we set up. We can make this thing checkable. And to be honest, I don't remember what this does, but we're going to figure this out when we run this. And we are going to add this to our toolbar. Let's try to run this and see what the checkable thing does. Okay, so we can run this and we have our thing showing up here. We see this thing is triggered and the checkable thing is not helping out in this moment. I think we can comment it out and see what happens. This is how you learn about these things. Okay, so let's resize this. And if you click, you see this thing is triggered. I think the checkable thing here is working in the same way as we saw for push button. So we're not going to be talking about this anymore here. If you want to see the signals that are sent by a Q action, again, we can go to the documentation and look for a Q action. 
Let's do that. Q action in Qt for Python. You can read all you can about this class. If we go down, hopefully we're going to see the signals that it emits. You see it has a triggered signal and it can pass a parameter which may be useful if you have set the checkable state here. I think that's the use for that. So you have this. Now you can read the documentation on Q action and know all you can do with it. Now I think we know how to work with toolbars. Let's see how we can work with the status bar. And the status bar is this little section below your window. I think we should show this. It is this little thing below in which you can show a bunch of messages. And we're going to show how this works in a minute. So let's go back to the code. But before we go to status bars, I just remembered something I didn't show you. We can add a separator to separate things in our toolbar. And we can even add a widget, something like a push button in a toolbar. And this is really cool. If this is helpful for whatever you are building with Qt for Python, please take advantage of that. Let's import Q push button for that to work. So Q push button. And let's go down and make sure we have no more squiggles. So we have the thing here. Let's run and see what this gives us. And you can see that you can even add a button. Okay, if you look closely, you're going to see that we have a separator here. So you can separate things in your toolbars. Now let's go and work on status bars. And all you have to do to work with the status bar is to set a status bar object to your main window. So we use the set status bar method here and we will create the object in place and set that as our own status bar. Status bar is in the Qt widgets module. So let's add that here, Q status bar. And once we have it, we can start showing things in the status bar. What we are going to do is to set a message to the status bar. So let's go in our slot. So let's go in our slot that responds when the toolbar button is clicked. So we're going to say self status bar and we are going to say show message. This is a method you can use to show a piece of message and you can pass the message. So message from my app. Let's say that. And you need to specify a timeout. You can specify, you can leave this empty. Let's first see what happens if you leave this empty. So let's do that. If you click, it's going to say message from my app. And you can see that if you click on this, the message in the status bar is going to change. And another thing that is wired in Qt is that if you hover over something that has a tooltip message, that tooltip is going to show up in the status bar. That's what you see here. But if you click, you see that our message is going to show up and it is not going to go away. It's going to stay there as long as you are hovering over the thing. You can pass a timeout parameter here. So let's say we want to wait for this for three seconds, 3000 milliseconds. This is what we mean here. So we can run the application again. If we run it and click on our thing, the message is going to show up, but it should go away in three seconds and it does go away. So click one, two, three, and it is going to go away after three seconds. And these are things you can really do with your Q main window class. We saw that we could use it to play with menus and menu bars. We played with toolbars and we later played with status bars. Another thing you can do with our application to make it a little less boring is to put some button in uh, the middle as a central widget. And we are setting up the button here and we are going to set up a method that is going to respond when this thing is clicked, when the button is clicked here. So let's make sure this is aligned properly and we want to respond when it is clicked. So let's put our method here. We are going to define a method. Let's say def and we are going to give it a name and we want to go inside and uh, put some message out clicked on the button you can do something like this and this is going to be our central widget and uh, we want to mark this as a method and if we show the terminal and run we should see a button in the middle of our application and if you click on it you're going to see the message here and this is really all I wanted you to see in this lecture. I apologize, it turned out to be really long, but QMain window is really interesting. Now you know how to add menus to your application. You know how to work with the toolbar and you know how to add status bar messages to your application. The toolbar is very flexible. I think you can even move it 
So you see, you can move it around in your application. You can play with us. It is really cool. We are going to stop here in this lecture, and I will see you in the next one.